Welcome to the Hub City Brew Review. I'm Christopher George. And I'm Mike Cathcart. This week we're taking on R.J. Roberts Fish Paralyzer, their Belgian style pale ale. It's a Belgian style pale ale, which is uh, different from an English pale ale and an American pale ale in a lot of different ways, and uh, we're going to get to that in a minute. But uh, on the appearance, this beer is a nice dark red color, isn't it? Yeah, it looks pretty good. You know, it's got that, it's darker for a, a typical Belgian. Mm -hmm. it, it looks actually really appealing. Um, it's got that nice red amber color going with it. Now this is the second in their Ales from the Dark Side series. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I guess that's the, the darkness. It's actually a little bit darker than some of the other Belgians I've seen out there, but it's still it's a pretty standard-ish look for the style. And it poured a, about a finger's worth of a head. It yeah, dissipated it pretty quick. off-white color. It, it dissipated quick, which is typical of Belgian. Uh, lacing is pretty low, which you know it mm -hmm. doesn't have a ton of carbonation in it. So. Yeah, it's not you know it's not that kind of beer. And uh, I'll say uh, now getting into the smell of this beer is actually where all that complexity that these beers are known for really comes across. Yeah. It's it's got a lot of a uh, lot of sweet fruit flavors, bananas, figs, that kind. Yeah, not like citrus fruit, but it's like a, no. you said like a banana or a fig, you know, exactly. it's a sweet, like a, mm -hmm. it's a syrupy sweetness syrupy, almost. Yeah. yeah, it's syrupy, almost, you know, I mean, uh, the way uh, canned peaches and syrup or whatever, not so much the peaches, but the syrup itself, the way it smells. Yeah. Yeah, kind of like that. Uh, and uh, that's that's really very typical. It's also yeasty smelling and kind of. You get that, that sugar alcohol yeah. smell, you know, like. Because he's, he's going to eat the sugar to make alcohol. Right. Maybe maybe the best way to describe it would be like banana bread. Maybe something like that. Except without the cinnamon and other crap. But uh, and then on the taste, it, it it's very much like that kind of a fermented fruit kind of thing. Yeah, yeah a lot, like, a lot like of it. wine in, in certain ways. You know, it's, it's almost like someone went out to make wine and ended up making beer instead. You know, it, it's got a lot of similar characteristics. You know? mm -hmm. It's that sweet syrupy malt comes across really heavy on it and uh, you know with that fermented kind of fruit thing and uh, but then in the middle you know you've got a, a reasonably good hop presence which I, I've had some Belgians where the hops were more or less non-existent yeah, weren't there at all this yeah. one actually you know the hops fight some but you know the, the malt ultimately wins yeah yeah it, it, the malt is definitely the dominant force in this beer and uh, at the end though I mean you got a this is a high grab beer. It's at seven and a half percent, so you got a little bit of alcohol warmth when it comes back up, and uh, you just feel it like in the center of your chest. It's all warm and fuzzy, but uh, it's a uh, you know then then that kind of bleeds over into the mouthfeel. This this stuff is it is thick, sticky as hell. Mm -hmm. It really is. This is a full bodied beer. Remember, we've we've complained about certain styles before being watery. Well, I think they took the water out of this one. And put it in those. Yeah. <laughs> Pull this thing down, you know. Yeah. It's, they, it's they, condensed beer. It really is. This is a... When you put this in your mouth, there is no doubt that this is beer. <laughs> There's nothing else going on in your mouth but this beer. And uh, over, that kind of gets me into the drinkability. This thing is... Uh, not drinkable. <laughs> <laughs> well, not by, the, not by the, uh, the normal beer drinking crowd. Yeah, this That's is that. something... You, you sit back and you savor, you mm -hmm. enjoy, you know, you have one glass of it. You know? Yeah, I mean, if you enjoy Bells and Beers, maybe you'd have more of it, but I, I gotta tell you, this is a, this is a sit down and enjoy beer, you know, uh, and, and that's sort of a philosophy among Belgian beers, actually. Yeah. They, they, they don't really think of themselves as quaffable refreshment for the masses. They, they kind of view it in a different light, and RJ's really has sort of captured that very well, I think, but, uh, it's not a beer that you're going to want to have a lot of. I like Belgian ales, and uh, I'll have one of these on occasion, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to appreciate it for what it is. It would be an insult for me to, for me to drink this beer down like it was, like it was a Hefeweizen. <laughs> yeah, you chug this beer, something's wrong with you. You, know, yeah. you just want to savor it and sit back and enjoy it. You know? yeah. There's too much thought went into this beer for me to do that to it. It's, respect the beer. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that gets me over my letter grade, and uh, I'm gonna give this one a good solid A. I mean, they really nailed the style. I feel like, and uh, 
they, uh, you know, it, it, it's a Belgian ale in almost every sense of the word. Oh, yeah. And uh, I, I think, being that I like the style, it's easy for me to, to give it that. And it's, a, it's a hearty beer drinker's beer. And uh, I'm glad they attempted it, so I'm going to give it an A. Yeah, I, I would have went with A, but just based on personal preference, I'm going to go with A-, just because I'm not a huge fan of Belgians, but this is perfect for the style. So I'm going to go with a good, solid A-. You know. Well, uh, I guess that's going to do it for this week. And uh, uh, if you like this, this style of beer, go out and pick, pick you one up and give it a shot. I mean, if it's not your thing, at least you'll know for sure. But uh, have a good week, guys.